Welcome back to the channel, folks. So here we are in the new garage. If you watched the last video, I said I had a bunch of boxes. Y'all probably knew what that meant. So we've moved, but we're still in Alabama. We just moved like a little ways away from where we were, but we're not done setting up yet. Got a lot left to do. We've only been here for a day and a half. So I just kind of stuffed everything in here. It's all shoved in, but Got the Model T, and I finally got room where I can actually start working on this thing. I don't have to side shuffle or just to get around the thing. So now I got room, I can do some stuff. A little excited about that. We're outside now, and we're in the back of the truck. I got a bunch of uh, like cattle fence or livestock fence, or I wouldn't call it cattle fence, but it might keep like a goat in there. Probably a goat would jump over that, but. It's just the thought that would count. But got a bunch of fencing, got a bunch of T-post, and you know what that means. Gonna be putting up some fence. Gotta put up some fence. I got a, a lot of area to put up some fence out back. I want to be able to let the dogs out and run around and not have to worry about them taking off on me. So that's the biggest concern is just kind of keeping the dogs in the yard. Other than that, I really don't, don't mind no fence. It's just for the dogs, but that's about it. But I just went to Harbor Fraud, picked up two jack stands. <laughs> there ain't jack stands, but it's a uh, engine hoist. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. And we're gonna hose it down, wash it up a little bit, and then I'll set it back in the garage here for a little bit until I can decide whether I wanna either put it in that Model T, maybe sell it, I don't know, put it in something else. I haven't really decided yet, but we'll figure it out one day. <laughs> Yeah, it's got two broken heads or exhaust manifold bolts. One iron. That one might not even be installed. So we're putting this old Harbor Fraud jack to work right now. And she's suspended, so we're not dead yet. So I guess it passes today's test. We'll pull her on back here. We're on a hill kind of, so I'm gonna turn it sideways. No more motor in the back of your truck now. I think lived in there for a few weeks. <laughs> Leaking trans fluid and everything in there. That EGR line right there, that's that thing's putting in the work. So we got it right here. Got a bunch of uh, degreaser sprayed on it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and hose it down right now and pressure walker screaming at us. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing washed off and see if we can't make it look a little shiny. Cotton picking season. John Deere. Good stuff. Let's see if this thing, I mean, it's built up on there pretty, it's bad. So it obviously needs some valve cover gaskets and there's some oil in here. So it probably needs a rear main seal. And I'm pretty sure the front's probably leaking too, so. I'd be a, be a lot more effective if I would have just pulled all the coils off, but I don't feel like doing that. So this is what I'm gonna do, but it'll be all right. I 
had the computer connectors up out of the water. Everything else is no biggie really if it gets wet. It'll be all right. I just kind of stayed away from the alternator. I probably hit it once or twice, but I just got most of the grease off the valve covers. I mean, there's still, this thing's still filthy. I need to pull it apart. Like, look, you can see right there. It ain't clean, clean, but I just wanted most of the dirt and grime off it before I start working on this thing. But I got her all somewhat sprayed down and it'll be good enough for me. I got to strip a few things off of it. And then whether I'm gonna keep it or not, I mean, that really also dictates a lot of what I'm going to do to this. So I got this little dartboard and I was gonna buy a case for it, put it on like this wall, but I decided I'm gonna put it right there. My grandpa has his right between the doors and I wanna have mine right between the doors too. So, dartboard I think is 18. Yeah, it's 18 inches and then my distance I got over there is 31. Oh, sorry, 32 inches between the two doors. So, I have more, but that's what I'm using is 32 inches. Because at 32, uh, minus 18 is 14, which give me uh, seven inches on each side of that board. And then I think this is 33, if I'm not mistaken. Once you add all of these stacked together like that, which will give me 15 inches. So seven and a half on each side, top and bottom. So it'll be kind of like a square around the board for dart or uh, miss shot darts to hit. So I'm getting all this lined out. And then once that's done, I'll be able to cut these up, pull the saw out, cut them up, burn them, put them on the wall. So I got the first board kind of mocked up there. And you can see there's oh, two three eighths lag bolts going into that garage door frame. So I notched them out. Now I, <laughs> I ain't got a wood chisel, but a, uh, I used a brake spoon. So I got that one done. I got that one done. And I'm in the middle of mining it out, getting my holes marked up, pre-drilling, and then I'm gonna just zap them all in. So now that I got those boards hung up, I'm gonna go ahead and get center line on it. So regulation, I think is like 68 inches from the ground to center of bullseye. So I'm gonna mark out 68 and then I'm gonna center on these boards here, which are 31.5. What is that? 15 and three quarter? Yeah, 15 and three quarter. So once I get that done, I'll be able to put my center screw in for that board, hang it, and then once it's hung, I'll be good for, uh, I'm just sizing everything up right now, make sure I like it. All right, so there she is hung up on the board. Looks fairly centered. It is definitely a half inch higher up top than it is down low. I'm gonna have to move all my boards up. So that's, that's a bummer, but no big deal. Or I might just take a half inch off that bottom board, who knows. I'm just doing it. I'm running out of gas. A lot of gas. I think it should be screaming compared to what it is. It's taking forever to burn these things too. Bag on, man. That'll do. I just got to run the last set of screws in both sides and I'm going to build a little shelf here. Hang on. A little turbo 400. That's a uh, power glide. Sorry, but anyone need a power glide? But I want to put a little shelf right here. I got to dig around. I think I got a couple pieces of uh, 
two two by fours. I'll run it off the wall like that, screw it into this stud, that stud, and then screw this into it. And it'll give me a little shelf so I can make a dart holder and put a notepad on here for whether we're playing around the world or cricket or 301 down, doesn't matter what it is. But that way there's a scoreboard. And now my grandfather, he switched over to the plastic dart board and plastic tip darts. Because when we were kids, boy, we'd be throwing these darts, want to play with everyone, you know? Yeah, we, we smoked the garage door a couple times. So there's a few little holes, little pinholes in the, his garage door. He's done JB welded them shut, but so he switched over to the plastic tip darts and he has a whole cork board behind his. It, it looks good too, but I like it. I dig it a lot, man. So there we got the dart board in there. And I just finished up the old shelf. Looking good. Nice and stable. And I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm probably gonna pull it back out just so I can do this. But I'm gonna put holes for the darts on both sides. So I got two sets of darts. But Amazon's supposed to be bringing me some more darts on Monday. And then I'll have my whole dartboard set up. Caught a break in the weather. I'm mapping out right now for the fence. Doing an eight foot. And then I'm gonna run that woven wire out here. Should be pretty nice. So I'm coming off my black fence right there, coming down, following down. Going all the way over here. I gotta get more posts from the garage. And I'm gonna come on over here. I'm not gonna, I might fix this fence. I'm not gonna run a fit double it. But they got bailing wire on here. I'll trim it up, pull it back up. It's fell down on itself. That way I got this line done and then I got to start doing this side up. And it's a gorgeous day today. A little cloud cover. It's one of the, I'm telling you the weather wise, it rained yesterday pretty good. Today, you can't beat a day like today, let me tell you. We got Justin out here running this fence. In. Got a lot of fence left and a real long strip to go, so pretty excited. Just trying to get this all fenced in. I want to get the dogs out here, start running them. That way I can throw that ball about as far as I can. What you think, Justin? Yeah. Justin said he ain't never messed around with this fence before. He's a barbed wire kind of guy good for the dog so we're doing the old goat wire yep bad good moose really sit sit good good so we just got a new dog right here moose uh lady on the internet on the facebook group we follow she said that he was too much for he's only 11 months old and he's a big boy but he was just too much for her to handle. And what do you call it? So we drove out Mobile, Alabama and rescued him. But here's this fence we got today. Put the wire up. It don't look, it don't look half bad. 
I fixed a little bit. It was falling down on the neighbor's fence over there. Right, oh, right there. So I fixed that and then it's falling down right back there kinda. So I gotta fix that and then start running my fence back on up. I think I've said that like three times, but they're good. Now, how big he is, Lily will turn the burners on now. Sit, sit, Lily sit, sit. Lily's fast, dude. Come on! Oh, she's got it. He's an absolute unit. But we're excited. He's here. Got a new forever home. <laughs>